begins in London on April 16, 1889, during the 52nd year of Queen Victoria's reign. By coincidence, it is the same year that Thomas A. Edison perfects his motion picture camera in America. In East Lane, Walworth, a son, Charles Spencer Chaplin, is born to parents who are music hall entertainers. His father, Charles Chaplin Sr., a popular baritone, dies at the age of 36, leading his son to a childhood of crushing poverty. His mother, Hannah, her stage name is Lily Harley, suddenly loses her voice. And while struggling to provide for her family, her fragile health fails. One day, young Charles returns to their garret room at 3 Pownall Terrace to find his mother in such a state that he must lead her to an infirmary. Left alone in London's Kennington slum, Charles and his older brother, Sidney, live like urchins out of a Dickens novel, keeping alive by doing odd chores, dancing in the streets, selling papers, such as these lads. Around him, he sees the tramps and the swells, the coppers and the toughs. More than his world, this is his school. Eventually, Charles spends several years under the harsh discipline of Lambeth Workhouse and the Hanwell School for Destitute Children. At the age of eight, he is already supporting himself as a member of the Eight Lancashire Lads, a clog dancing act. In 1900, when he is 11, Charles becomes a child actor on the London stage. Success comes to him in the play Sherlock Holmes, in which he appears with a noted American playwright and actor, William Gillette, in the part of Billy, the Cockney page boy. Charles' life's work is now cast. At 16, he joins Casey's Court Circus, an act in which youngsters impersonate famous people. Charles brings down the house with his impression of Dr. Walford Bodie, a notorious medical charlatan. He now considers switching from drama to comedy. When Sidney Chaplin becomes a successful comedian with the famous Fred Carno Company, he persuades his boss to give his kid brother a job. Charles, seated second from the left, soon shows his natural comic talents and is given leading roles in Carno sketches such as this one, called Skating. Another young comedian in the act is Arthur Stanley Jefferson, later to gain fame as Stan Laurel of Laurel and Hardy. In 1910, the Carno Troop is sent to tour America, and Chaplin is among those selected to go with them. As he is now the leading comedian of the company, he receives the handsome salary of $75 per week. At the extreme left is his understudy, Stan Laurel. From Broadway's American Music Hall to the Empress Theater in Los Angeles, the Carno Troop tours America for three years. Their biggest hit is a famous Carno pantomime sketch, Mumming Birds. In America, its title changed to A Night in an English Music Hall. The audience sees a show within a show, with Chaplin playing a tipsy gentleman seated in a box on stage who continually heckles and interrupts the performers. 